Christmas is a special time. It's also incredibly busy as you race from party to party and place to place and try to buy every gift and make everything perfect. Sometimes I'm afraid we get caught up in the rush and we miss what really matters. A wonderful antidote to the stress and busyness of the season is a return to the simple message of Christmas, the reason we celebrate. Uh, what really matters has never changed. God sent his son Jesus as a gift to all mankind. Because Jesus came to earth, we can be forgiven, free, whole, and healed. This is our 15th year of family Christmas. When we first did it, we didn't plan on it becoming a tradition. It's just uh, that first year in our Christmas service, our hearts were touched with the needs of some people in our church family, and we decided to surprise them. And then the next year we did it again, and a tradition was born. Uh, I'm generally uh, worried about creating new traditions uh, because they're difficult to stop. I don't want to stop them. I don't want to leave them for the next guy to have to stop and be the person who killed family Christmas. Um, <laughs> traditions can be something you just do because you've always done it, uh, not because it's meaningful or special. And so I, I'm careful, but family Christmas is still meaningful and special, and it's grown. Individuals, businesses, families, ministry groups, connection classes, all plan and give to bless those in need, and to celebrate difference makers in our church family. Even people from outside our church give and attend both live and online to be part of Family Christmas. And I want to welcome, uh, I've heard from so many members of our missionary family overseas who some, are, some got up early, others it's late in the day for them, uh, but they wanted to be a part of this. And so from Africa and China and uh, Europe and Eurasia and so many I've heard from we welcome you today too and we love you we wish you were here in person but we love you and glad to have you join us online uh, every gift you see today and all the first three services and this one were funded by an individual or a group as a result of God speaking to their heart and there's always people who say well that's not possible how can people give that or how can people give that much when you're committed to a generous life and putting others first, it's amazing what's possible. One of my favorite stories, and it's probably the fourth family Christmas, I think, we gave away a truck. And a, a good friend of mine had called me and said, I really want to do this. I want to give this. And there was a, there's a lady sitting next to him who's kind of critical and negative. And she's like, I don't believe anyone gave that. And he never told her that he's the one. He just looked at her and he said, you might be surprised. <laughs> so it's cool. The stories of people giving are just as much fun as, the, as people receiving. They've sacrificed in response to God's prompting and then allowed me the privilege of giving the gifts. So thank you. Thank you for loving people and for giving. Every once in a while, someone will say, well, well that's, how can you bless one person or how can you bless one family with that much? Well, I don't dictate how much people give to love and bless others. I let the Lord direct them, and I just celebrate radical generosity. I also want you to know, um, we reach out and care for people all year long. We don't let a family stay hungry so we can feed them at family Christmas. Uh, we're not cruel and stingy all year long so we can have one good day. You've shared, as you just heard Ashton say on the video, over 5,000 bags of groceries this year. <laughs> Pretty phenomenal. And we now share your lunch as we are 19, let's see, we're 22 months into it. And you were just giving me the total in 22 months. 9,300 9, bags of groceries we've given away. Phenomenal. So thank you. Thank you for sharing food and clothes and furniture and cars and appliances and money all year long. Uh, caring for others shouldn't just happen at Christmas. It should happen all year long. From my earliest Christmas memory, my family always sat around the living room. So my dad opened the big green living Bible and read the Christmas story. And then after dad read the Christmas story, we'd open gifts. 
We're going to do it a little different today. We're not going to wait until I'm done reading for gifts. Instead, we're going to open some special gifts as we read the Christmas story. Now, so you know, the people on stage uh, also don't know the gifts. The only people on stage who know what's going to happen is on the team, Pastor Tyler and Jordan. So no one else knows. So they're, they don't know when they're going to be interrupted. They don't know what's going to be given. So it's fun to watch them cry as well. Family Christmas team started working on today, the week before last year's family Christmas, so 53 weeks. Spent a lot of time thinking and praying, asking God to lay on their hearts and on the hearts of others, people to bless this Christmas. Now, will we meet every need in this service? No, of course not. It's not possible. There's, there's a lot of other giving that goes on. We just don't have time to highlight it all in this service. So I encourage you, celebrate needs being met. If you have a need, know that your Heavenly Father knows what you need. Matthew 6, says that. And he's watching over you. So today, from the books of Matthew and Le- Luke, or Leek, <laughs> we're going to rewrite the Bible. Uh, we're going to read the Christmas story. And I think we're going to actually read a little more of it, this service. Uh, so, But if I do... I try to be time conscious, so if I miss part of the Christmas story you love, there's a Bible, and it's under the chair in front of you or one to the right or left. You're welcome to take it as our gift to you, and I'll give you the references so you can, I'd, if you've never like read this story, I definitely recommend reading it. It's awesome to read. So we're going to start Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, and... Uh, Oh, you're, you're going to direct who reads this service. Okay. She was giving me little cues there. All right. Perfect. Pastor Brian will read. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ and came he about. pause there because that's where I interrupted him last service. But I'm not this service. Oh, you're very you kind, can, sir. You can keep reading. Yep. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. It would have been a disaster for Mary. Joseph faced public disgrace. Mary faced being a single mom in a day where single moms couldn't work. Women didn't work. If Mary wasn't married, she'd have no way to provide for her soon-coming child. There's no doubt it's still a huge challenge to be a single mom. One of our core values and our guiding statement is every soul matters to God. We love single moms. We're committed to walking alongside them through the parenting process. After this service, we're hosting our single moms and their kids for our annual Christmas celebration, uh, RSVPs. We had 217 single moms, RSVP. That's pretty awesome. It is... uh, It is a highlight of the Christmas season for us. And this year, we did something fun. They are wearing their tickets to the lunch. We did T-shirts as tickets. So stand up, single moms, so we can see the red shirts, and we can honor and celebrate you. Wow, look at all the single moms. That's awesome. I love you. That's fun. All right. Um, Sheriff, why don't you keep reading there? But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Joseph had no reason to believe that story. But Joseph obeyed God, took Mary as his wife. Mary obeyed God, and they were together used by God in a miracle. Now let's pick up the story again, Luke chapter 2. Jordan, you got a mic over there? All right, read. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. 
and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. We don't really know why there was no room. The Bible doesn't say. You know, the traditional Christmas play is the innkeeper is a grumpy man in a bathrobe telling him, sorry, you got to go away. Uh, we don't, that's, that's just kind of the way we do it in plays. But maybe the town was full because of the census. Uh, perhaps no one wanted to create a place for a baby to be born that was conceived out of wedlock. We don't know. But regardless, there was no room for Mary and Joseph and Jesus. Mary and Joseph had to overcome a lot of obstacles to create a home and family for their new baby. And I want to introduce you to a family that's faced many obstacles, that's overcoming, and ask them to join me on the stage, Rodrigo and Angelica Valle, and their children, Eli, Raymond, Amy, and Emily. Come on up, guys. They're trapped in the middle of people? All right, not a problem. No worries at all. We're patient. All 1,400 of us are patient. Come on, girls. Oh, yeah, they're adorable. Here, sit right here. You want to sit on that? Nope. Sit on or the couch, wherever you want to sit. I don't care. There's not rules. It's Christmas. No rules at Christmas. Did you say it's bright up here? Yeah. Right before the service, Cindy was complaining that it was hot up here, and I said, Yeah, I I do this every week. Yeah. Um, I want to tell you a little bit of their story. Rodrigo used to listen to Manuel and Lupita uh, when they had a family life talk show on the radio. And one day, Rodrigo called Manuel, asked if he knew someone that would take him to church. And so Manuel and Lupita gave Rodrigo a ride to church every week. He fell in love with the church, and we fell in love with him. When Rodrigo was eight years old, he got an infection that caused him to lose his sight. Uh, but blindness did not destroy Rodrigo. He's independent, doesn't feel sorry for himself. He's pleasant and kind and loving. He's quick to give you a big smile. He's never impatient or demanding. In fact, as soon as you speak to him, he greets you by name. He knows who you are. When you whisper things, he hears you. <laughs> Rodrigo and Angelica's relationship started over the phone. Angelica lived in California. Rodrigo moved to California to be near her. They had two sons. Eli, raise your hand, Eli, so they know who's who. There you go. All right. He's ready. And Raymond. Raise your hand, Raymond. Yep. And uh, they immediately, the boys fell in love with Rodrigo and called him dad. The boys love him and respect him. And then we have these two beautiful girls that are now part of their lives, Amy and Emily. Emily, how old are you? Emily's four? All right, awesome. Um, Cheryl Richards wrote about them. I want to read it to you. Angelica struggled getting up on Sunday mornings to come to church. Rodrigo longed to go to church. So he began praying that Angelica would desire the same. I wanted to spend time with Angelica, so I went to their home with a basket of groceries to welcome her to our church. I remember, remember sitting in her living room, listening to her cry as she shared with me that she struggled with depression and unforgiveness. Angelica was raised Catholic. I explained to her about accepting Christ as her personal Savior. I asked Angelica if she'd like to ask Jesus to be Lord of her life, and she said she would. She prayed the sinner's prayer, and now she could call on God to help her with the problems of life. 
Rodrigo has worked at Winston-Salem Industries for the Blind for nine years. He does sewing on a sewing machine. I'd like to see that. And uh, a few years ago, he was chosen employee of the year, the most efficient with production, the fastest sewer. Pretty awesome. And really cool, Rodrigo's been a legal permanent resident for several years, but just recently, he passed the test to become a citizen. That's pretty awesome. And now we're just praying the rest of that process goes fast and we get to celebrate. God has truly changed this couple. They never miss church. They're the first ones here for discipleship class on Sunday mornings. They're reading their Bible. They do devotions together every day. They attend the English and civics class. We do English and civics class every Tuesday for immigrants as well as tutoring for children. And they bring their children to tutoring. God's blessing them. Uh, this family lives in an apartment uh, that needs a lot of fixing up. They haven't had air conditioning for over a year. They asked the management to fix it, but nothing's been done. Uh, repairs that are needed are usually ignored. The neighborhood's very unsafe. Several times someone has tried to break in. If they leave anything outside, like their grill or the kids' bikes, it's stolen by the next day. Well, we may not be able to replace everything that's been stolen, but some people who love you want to bless you this Christmas. And so we have gift for the kids here. All right. So we're dispatching. Oh, you got to have a little chart so you know which. So you know which wrapping paper is which. All right, guys, we got to spread out a little. Oh, you're pretty good. Emily, you want to come down here on the floor and open your gifts? Come over here by me. Come here, I'll help you. Here you go, Amy. There's yours. Come here, Emily. Come over here with me. I'm going to get all your gifts here. I, here, sit down right here. We'll get all your gifts. Oh, here's yours. Okay. Turn around so everybody can see you. Here we go. All right, let's start opening them. And then hold it up when you open it so everybody can see it. All right? You ready? All right, go for it. Okay, baby, I love you. That process is going to have to go a bit faster than that. Oh, is it a Nerf gun? Bring it, big boy. Oh, they both got them. That'll, that'll bring peace and joy to the family. <laughs> Emily just made it to the first gift Woo! open. Yes. <laughs> Show everybody what you got there, baby. Oh, Barbie. Very nice. Oh, she said, I got a princess. She's beautiful. Can we, open an, can we open another one? Would yeah. that be all right? All right, great. Can I help you a bit? All right. I don't want to ruin the fun opening gifts, but I also don't want to be here till 3 o'clock. Oh, you want to open that one? Okay. Or that one. She said, I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> All right. A, another Barbie doll? Sweet. Oh, it's got a dog. Oh, what does the dog do? She said, the dog says, woofy, woofy. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Do you know how to say apples in Spanish? I could teach you. Whoa, look at that one, Amy. Keep going, Emily. You're doing great. Oh, let me see that. Now that's a Nerf gun right there, buddy. Turn it around so everybody can see it. That's the best Nerf gun like ever. I love that one. 
it seems like if you have a Nerf gun and a... Oh, yeah, you got a guy, too. She's more excited about the guy. All right. Starting young, sure enough. Yep. Not a problem. <laughs> Are you having... Uh, you're good. I don't... I was willing to help, but... Oh, the Barbie, she said it's the whole, it's the whole entire thing. It's the biggest one I've ever seen. That's awesome. Do you like Barbies? You're getting a lot of Barbies here. I hope you do. All right. Oh, let's, let's, yeah. Yes, you did. All right. Let's open, let's open this thing right here. Yeah. All right, girls, we got something else for you here. There you go. This is your new friend. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's that? Oh, yeah, okay. She said, I will open it. And that's what I wanted you to do. All right, Raymond and Eli, you've got one to open together. This is for you to share. I know that goes well. Oh, you got a Barbie core. That's awesome. I think so. Oh, she's got one more. Oh, you have one more, Emily. You got one more. Here it comes. Emily, here comes your last oh gift. God, look, Emily. Oh my God. It's coming around here, Emily. <laughs> oh, sure. Why not? Let me get the... Uh... You want to go down and try it? Oh, absolutely. Why not? Come on. Let's go down there. Here, well, let me... Um... That's, don't, don't jump. Here, the steps are right, steps are right here, baby. Here you go. She said, I want to try it. Here you go. Got it? There you go. Okay, give it a try. If you're sitting on the front row, watch your feet. <laughs> I told you to watch your feet. Oh, that's awesome. Oh. Then Rodrigo and Angelica, we've got some presents for you as well. And uh, they're coming in. Oh. We have a new grill. And we have a new washer and dryer. We also have for you for Raymond, 2019, all activities in SLAM paid for, including kids, including kids Camp, which is pretty awesome. Eli, all your reality activities for the year, including the deepening, are camp for students. And for Amy, all the activities for SLAM for 2019. And then we have one final gift for you. I'm going to let you open it up here. Yep, that's from Mom. Go ahead and just open it. It's a key. And... We wanted there to be somewhere for your grill and washer and dryer. 
So take a look at the screen, and there's the picture of your new house. I think, I think I have a couple pictures of the inside of it too, do I? I can't remember. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Very nice. We have, we have made the down payments. The first six months of payments have been made and the, your payment will be right around $350 a month, which is less than your apartment. And you don't have to deal with that beat up landlord anymore who won't fix stuff, which is great. Um, I, wanna, I wanna give a special thanks and ask them to stand to our partners, Lee Bass, Kelly Sims, and the Habitat for Humanity board that made this possible. Would you stand please? God bless you and Merry Christmas. <laughs> all right. We're going to help you get all this stuff. Thank you. Ella es come manzanas. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> tu casa es grande. Yes. 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 Muy bonito. Yes, Perfecto. Yes. Ah, <laughs> Alleluia. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, you're most welcome, Rodrigo. Merry Thank Christmas, so my friend. We, we love you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. What a precious family. How fun is that? You're welcome. Oh. She picked up an extra shift at work so that she could be here tonight. And we found out yesterday she wasn't going to be here this morning. So the lying began in earnest after that. <laughs> Thank you, Habitat for Humanity. We love your mission and love what you do. Uh, we have enjoyed a rich and wonderful partnership, and uh, thank you. Thanks for caring about our community and for caring for people. It's beautiful to see how God uses you to make a difference. Thank you. All right. That was awesome. Jesus is born in a manger. It's not what you'd expect for the Son of God. He came uh, as a simple humble, ordinary man. He set the example of humility and sacrifice. Now, pick us up at verse 8. Emily, you want to pick us up there? You get a mic? Sure. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the it's town a, of David. That's kind of a key part of the story, one that's often missed. The angels said all the people. They weren't just making a birth announcement. They were announcing a new theology, the first hint of the plan of God. It's one of the first moments we find out for all people, everyone. As a church, we're committed to not just caring for ourselves, but others. We will be outward focused. We refuse to be selfish, only caring about our needs and preferences. We will not lose sight of Jesus' command to take the gospel to all people everywhere. I want to introduce you to a family who beautifully lives out that value and invite them to join me on the stage. Vincente, Maia, 
Salvador, and Ruth Cuero. Come on up, guys. Where are they, Tyler? Oh, I can't see. Oh, they're at the back. By the way, this is not an energy drink, just sparkling water. Somebody asked me, man, you're really going after those energy drinks. No. Can you imagine? I haven't had a caffeinated drink in eight years. And so if I had an energy drink, it would be, it would be crazy. And then all of a sudden, just a crash. And I'd be, and then fall to the ground. All right, here they come. Let's see, I gotta move over by you, Sheriff, that all right? What's up, Salvador? My brother. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Have a seat. This is an awesome family. Vincente and Maya have been living in the US for approximately 17 years. Their journey here was long and dangerous, but they were determined to create a better life and have a safe place for their future family. Salvador and Ruth were both born here in the U.S. Maya was raised in a Christian home. Vincente was raised Catholic. Each family was and still is very devoted to their beliefs. Maya's family made it very clear they wouldn't approve or allow her to marry Vincente. Once they were in the U.S. and away from their families, they got married. Throughout the marriage, Maya could tell that Vincente didn't want anything to do with the church or Christianity. He'd become frustrated and bothered when she'd listen to Christian music. She began to pray for him, even had her family praying for his salvation. Vin Vincente is the type of person who needs proof of what you're saying. Once he has proof and he understands, so accept it. Took a very long time, 12 years, before he surrendered his life to the Lord. But once he did, he began to search the scriptures. He now attends Bible Institute. He's taken several courses. He has a love for God's word. He's so excited about his newfound faith and what he was learning that he decided to be water baptized. His family was not happy with his decision to be saved. Life in the U.S. has not been easy for Vincente and Maya. They're hard workers, have a desire to own their own home. They purchased a small home in Hot Springs, began to fix it up. Unfortunately, they were victims of theft and vandalism. A neighbor began to steal the copper and other materials. Now they live in a very small trailer that they rent uh, through the graciousness of Vincente's employer. February 17th this year, Maya had a stroke. Initially, she was paralyzed on one side of her body. As she recovered, she was left with weakness that affected her walking. She had physical therapy. She started walking with a cane. Before long, she's walking by herself. Her recovery was miraculous. She changed her eating habits. She started exercising. She's doing great. Salvador has been a faithful member of our sanctuary choir for three years. That's right. Thank you, man. Think about it. He started at 12 years old in the choir. Uh, he also plays keyboard and the trumpet. He's part of the worship band that plays in our Amistad services. Ruth works right along with the rest of the family. She's an extremely talented artist. They all attend this service, 1130 service, every Sunday. Last year, their family was awarded Volunteers of the Month because of their commitment and faithfulness to our Latino ministry. Awesome. Proud of you. Vincente and Maya would do anything for anyone, and we've seen that generosity demonstrated over and over. Vincente worked on our new building as much as he could when we were remodeling. As a family, they came and removed the wax on the floors in our old classroom, and then they would take care of the floors and wax them every few weeks. They do that now in the new facility. They're on a team that cleans the, our Latino ministry building. This family lives with open hearts and generous hands. And Vincente and Maya, some people who love you, want to bless you this Christmas. So we have some gifts. First for the kids. 
That's for you, Ruth. You can start opening. Open faster than those other kids did. Oh, look how many gifts Ruth has. Oh, my goodness. Salvador's like, she got four. A wireless headphone. She got 43 gifts. You got four, man. <laughs> Welcome to life as a guy. <laughs> All right, yeah, go ahead. Start opening them. Yeah, you can be slower because she's, oh, some art supplies. Very cool. Always one of those. That's cool. What are they? Let me see them. They're brush pens. Very cool. Keep unwrapping. Keep going. What do you do? All right, what is it, Salvador? Apple. Oh, it's iTunes gift cards. Fifteen to sixty dollars worth of iTunes gift cards right there. I get some music. I see a trend here, Ruth. There's gonna be some art supplies in here. Keep opening. Just yeah, go for it. I'm guessing art supplies. Close. All right. Amazon Echo, wow. that's awesome, nice. yep, don't look at his stuff, Ruth, keep opening yours. <laughs> More clothes for Ruth, all right, all right. Extra bass, Bluetooth speaker. You gotta rock the bass. Wake up your parents. More art supplies. Oh, that's awesome. Love it. All right, Beats headphones. Those are great. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. All right, we're going to let Ruth keep opening. We got one more thing for you here, uh, Salvador. This is a gift certificate for all reality activities for 2019, including full paid to the deepening. Wow. Yeah, absolutely, really. Yep. It's going to be awesome. You're going to love it, man. You're welcome. It's a ton of fun. It includes the meal plan at the deepening, too. So, yeah. You're doing good, Ruth. Your speed is to be admired. Panda pajamas? <laughs> Pastor Parker has some just like those. I like the speed at which she opens gifts. Oh, very pretty. More clothes. One more gift. Oh, very nice. More good looking clothes there. And Ruth, we also have for you a gift card for all reality events for 2019, including the deepening. All right. And then uh, Vincente and Maya, we have a gift for you as well. Here's your gift. I'll let you open it. And I want to show you what that goes to. Hey, some dear friends of mine gave this gift. It is a brand new trailer with three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and I'd, it's, it's two years old. It's, I have other friends who said, that, look at the kitchen, looking pretty nice there. 
I have some other friends who are having new carpet put in the trailer for you this week. And we talked to your boss, a wonderful man, Walter Kuhn, and he's going to allow you to put the trailer on his property. And and my wonderful friends, when they first approached me about this trailer, I couldn't believe it. Um, but we have the deed to the trailer for you. It is paid in full. <laughs> Vincente and Maya, Ruth, Salvador, Merry Christmas. People always ask me later, what are you saying in those moments? There's a reason I turned my microphone off. <laughs> now, uh, I'm going to need your help. If, if you have kids in an aisle, I need you to get them out of the aisle and get them in a seat or on your lap. And for the duration of this service, you're not allowed to leave the room. Okay? I'm asking the ushers to stand by the doors to encourage you to stay because we don't want to ruin the next surprise and we don't want you to get hurt. All right? So you just you need to stay where you're at. <laughs> now they're like, what in the world? <laughs> I, I didn't mean the ushers have tasers. I, that's Not a bad idea. Although there are sometimes... Oh, yeah. Like so hang with us. It's going to be fun. All right. Let's see. Uh, I, I think that it was just one service. We've got to read the whole story. So we're going to keep reading. All right. Ashton, uh, pick it up in Luke chapter 2, verse 11. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see the thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. You know, we love good news. Good news brings great joy. Uh, now we'll go to Matthew chapter 2 and verse 1. Uh, Parker, do you want to read? Nope. Um, you changed your mind? Yeah, I did. All right, great. <laughs> I just got the section that's really challenging to pronounce everything. and so I've got confidence in you, son. Yeah, I'm sure I you believe do. you can do it. You're a good reader. Do you just want to tell me now how you'd like me to pronounce Magi or Magi, which way would you prefer today? Maggie? Maggie, <laughs> Maggie from the East. I've only known a Maggie from the West. Okay, and that was you cheesy. think that I you think that I would correct you? Absolutely. At Christmas? Yeah. We actually have a support group. <laughs> Parker, this year at the widow's luncheon a couple of weeks ago, it came time for the giveaways. And Parker went and sat down at the keyboard, and it was going to be the song stylings of Parker Loy. And then he did the giveaways. And for the next 45 minutes, we laughed 
till we were crying. I mean, literally, people, their heads on the table. I hurt when it was over because I laughed so hard. He was so stupid for so long. It was awesome. <laughs> it's not the first time I've heard that. <laughs> Some might say it's been 25 years of stupid. So. I would never say that, of course, no. because you are my son whom I love. You want to read? There would be nothing that would bring me more joy than to read this section right here. Then why don't you? I will. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea. You know, and there's some discussion whether that should be, <laughs> whether that should be Judea or Judea. I knew you were going to say it. Uh, I, but I, it's okay that you picked Judy. that. You picked that. <laughs> Judy and Maggie. Judy and Maggie. <laughs> it's a whole new Christmas story today, folks. It's <laughs> better buckle up. This is going to take a while. Settle in, people. Parker's reading the story. I'm trying you know, my best. Sometimes people ask me, are the stories you tell about your home really true? I usually so cut them in half because it's so ridiculous crazy. Yeah. Our this home. is a real family Christmas right here. Yes, it is. Yeah. Now we're doing the real thing. Go ahead. Finish. You sure? Yeah, keep reading. <laughs> okay. You never did tell me how you wanted me to say magi or magi. I'm waiting to see what you do, and then I'm going to correct it. Whichever you say, I'm going to want it the other way. <laughs> It's kind of what I was expecting. Yep, that's the most Maggie wonderful. from the east came to Jerusalem <laughs> and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. Very first Christmas was a joy-filled occasion. Mary and Joseph discovered the joy of being parents of the Son of God. Shepherds and wise men were filled with joy. Still today, Christmas is a time for joy. And I, I know you could be thinking, well, Pastor Rod, this year it doesn't feel like joy to me. I feel like something should be said right now. I got nothing. <laughs> a little disagreement. <laughs> and Tyler was... says, this is your idea. <laughs> yeah, okay. Where was I? Do you want me to read again? Or? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love family Christmas. Oh, okay. So you may be thinking, uh, for me, it's not joy. And, you know, we're always sensitive to that, the holiday season. Uh, we know some people have had difficulty years. We know some have suffered loss in this year. Um, if you've lost someone you love, then the first Christmas with, without them is a very difficult time, very challenging time. Uh, we understand that. And pray for you and love you and hurt with you but you can still have joy because joy is different than happiness happiness is based on current circumstances happiness is based on where you are or what you have uh, people say money can't buy happiness but it can for a moment i can prove that I mean, if I, if I give you $1,000, you're going to be happy. Now, it's not lasting. Somebody said, amen. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> it doesn't last long. Joy, joy is different. Um, you can be unhappy and still have joy. Joy comes from knowing you're not alone. Joy comes from knowing that even in difficult circumstances, especially in difficult circumstances, God is with you. Joy comes from an eternal perspective. You can have joy in the middle of difficulty because you aren't living for this life. You're living for, this, for the next life. Uh, we are not promised a smooth ride. Somebody said to me yesterday, yeah, if the mountain was completely smooth, you wouldn't be able to climb it. So we're not, we're not promised a smooth ride. 
there's going to be challenges. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. Kind of not anyone's favorite promise in the Bible. Uh, but this earth is just a temporary home. And we're headed for heaven. That's our true home. And when you get to heaven, all that, uh, all that will, will no longer be our cares and concerns. The wise men made a long journey. And at the end of their journey, they found Jesus. And I love this part of the story. I'm going to let you read it. Verse 11. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. This is my favorite part of the story. Because I, I just imagine that moment. Mary held her baby in her arms. That's, that's always a, a moment of great emotion. Uh, and then add to that emotion that she wasn't just holding her baby, but she knew the baby she was holding was the Messiah, the Christ child, the Son of God, the hope of the world. I, I just can't imagine that overwhelming sense of love and responsibility. And this is the very first moment in Scripture where Jesus is worshipped, the Son of God uh, come to earth. And still today, our response to the most incredible gift uh, at Christmas is worshiped, worship, because Jesus came. Now, I want to go back to this, the start of this improbable story, and I want to focus a little more on Mary, because her not-so-simple act of obedience is what changed the world. The angel appeared to Mary, and she didn't know everything that was ahead of her. She didn't know what was going to happen. But even without details, she obeyed. Uh, in fact, her, the line she said to the angel, may it be to me as you have said. And Mary practiced a simple trust in obedience without knowing. She willingly accepted the assignment, even if the assignment meant being a single mom with no idea how to provide for her child. Uh, our single mom's ministry, Solo, is by a le led by an amazing group of ladies. And I want to invite the leadership team of Solo to join me on the platform. Renee Donaldson, Jennifer Martin, and Amy Librand. Come on up. This is Renee. That's just a bottle of water. Jennifer's on the other end. This is Amy Libran in the middle. Sometimes it goes by Amanda. <laughs> so I call her Amy Amanda. It's very confusing. Depends on the day. Some days she's Amy, some days she's Amanda. I don't understand it. Is there a story behind why? Yeah. <laughs> My mom and dad fought over what to name me. Wait. Because uh, I've always wondered, so this is my moment. What's the story? Well, my mom's out there, but my mom and my dad fought over what to name me, and my mom won on the birth certificate, but my dad said he was always just going to call me Amy anyway. <laughs> so it's stuck. Yeah, she's out there. It's her fault. That's pretty awesome. Where'd my son Hugo go? <laughs> That's pretty awesome. As a church, uh, we've opened our arms to single moms. They're not takers. They're incredible givers who are involved in every ministry of our church. It's a joy to walk with them on their journey of obedience. But many of us uh, don't really understand how difficult that journey can be. And I want to read you stories from two single moms who are hardworking, they're happy, they're involved in our church, they joyfully serve others. They're involved in ministry. They don't complain. Even if you know them well, you've probably never heard them say they're hungry. They eat what they can afford, not what they want. They do without food so their children can eat. They trust God for each day and each meal. I want to read you their stories. The first one wrote, 
I recently had to go two weeks with $20. My purchase was a package of bologna, a package of lunch loaf, a half gallon of milk, a loaf of bread, syrup, yogurt, and a carton of eggs. I had a few packages of meat that I bought in bulk and saved in the freezer. The last of the pasta I'd been blessed with, we blessed her with that, was almost gone. My daughter's faith was such that was, she was certain we would make it, that God's provision would see us through. We made it. I rely on my daughter eating at school to help with the budget. I can do without, and I have so my child can eat. I rely on specials at the grocery store to stretch the budget. What I miss most when it's very tight are fresh fruit and vegetables. As a single mom, you have to serve filling foods such as potatoes far more than you care to. If it wasn't for canned goods specials, I couldn't serve vegetables. Grace abounds every day. Another of our single moms wrote, I'm a single mom of three under the age of 10. So most would think feeding them would be easy. At times it is, but on many occasions had it not been for share your lunch, I wouldn't have been able to feed my children. I have a good paying job and I do receive food stamps. In June, I got a raise and went from making $9.25 an hour to $13 an hour. Pretty awesome raise. That made my eligibility for food stamps go down from $420 to $190 a month. So if you do the math, her $600 a month raise before taxes costs her $250 a month in food stamps. She goes on buying food not to mention nutritional items is a challenge. With the cost of the mere basic food items, I'm left with the decision to cook a lot of meatless meals. It got so tight, so bad earlier this year, that one time I cooked popcorn for supper. I told the kids we were having a movie night and that we were having popcorn. To take away from not having enough to eat, I turned it into a family fun night so they wouldn't be focused on what we would be eating. So that night we had Kool-Aid and popcorn, but we had a good time as a family. For many families right here in our, our own church, having enough food each week is a struggle. Our moms often do without so their kids can eat. And I, I know I talk about share your lunch a lot, and you might get tired of hearing me talk about it. This is why. The food you bring is not just a ritual. It is life-giving, and it's life-saving for other people. Uh, and if you knew what a difference that made, you'd never miss a week. What a difference a jar of peanut butter makes. Can you imagine... If an entire church family made sharing their food every week a regular life habit, I just want to challenge you to do that. When you go to the grocery store, buy more. We'd never again have a family in our own church eating popcorn and Kool-Aid for a meal or trying to stretch $20 for two weeks' worth. Last week, the week before family Christmas, uh, we started putting, we started dreaming about our biggest gift ever, um, God put this on my heart, and then they made it happen. This leadership team has been part of the process. And so I want everyone wearing a solo T-shirt, these red T-shirts, to stand. We're going to turn the house lights up so we can see you again. All right, stay standing. Stay standing, all right? And now welcome to Christmas Chaos, because we have a gift for each of you. All right, open the doors. Here we go.
While they're coming in, let me just start reading you some of what's in every grocery cart. Two cut yams and syrup. Two cans of pinto beans, 16 ounces. One pack of black-eyed peas. Two things of mixed vegetables. Two things of sliced carrots. Six things of tomato sauce. One size, two things of tomato paste. Uh, six cans of tuna. Jellied cranberry sauce. Crushed pineapple. Cream of mushroom soup. Cream of chicken soup. Chicken noodle soup. Chicken broth. Uh, four pounds of sugar, five pounds of flour, two pounds of brown sugar, 48 ounces of vegetable oil, a uh, big old thing of oatmeal, uh, Pop-Tarts, peanut butter, jelly, applesauce, mashed potatoes, hamburger helper chili macaroni, hamburger helper cheeseburger macaroni, hamburger helper deluxe beef stroganoff, hamburger helper lasagna, hamburger helper cheesy enchiladas, Macaroni and cheese, five of them. Uh, spaghetti sauce mix, turkey flavoring stuffing mix, tuna helper, tuna helper, spaghetti, rice, crackers, cake mix, cake mix, a bag of makeup with lip gloss and mascara and nail polish, uh, shampoo, conditioner, body wash, and toilet paper from your church family, uh, Kroger Hawaiian dinner rolls, a loaf of bread, uh, a big thing, a detergent, 10 pounds of potatoes, uh, corn, lots of corn, uh, green beans, green beans, bottled water, a case of Gatorade, all kinds of extra snacks and cereal. There, I see Frosted Flakes and cookies and Cheez-Its and peanut butter crackers and cheese crackers. Plus, not only do you see the food that's here, by the way, this is 200 grocery carts, I think, that we fit in the sanctuary. <laughs> but ladies, we also have a freezer truck in the alley, and we have for every one of you milk, butter, Fresh carrots, apples, oranges, five pounds of hamburger, a turkey for Christmas dinner, and a sweet potato pie. Yeah. And we want to tell you from your church family, from all of us, we love you. And uh, Merry Christmas. Now, you're getting a picture of why I had to get you out to stay in the room. Um, a, a total in food is over $70,000 of food that was given. So, now here's what we have to do. I want everyone to be seated. And now you don't get to leave either. <laughs> because here, here's just the real world. we got to get all these grocery carts back out of here before you can leave. Moms, we're going to load your cars after lunch today. And we've got a plan. We're going to load out of the fridge truck too. And so we're going to get these carts out of here. That's going to take us a little bit. So just set easy. If you try to leave, you're just going to be stuck behind a cart. So you're not going to get to go anywhere. So Pastor Brad, uh, I've decided that we're going to need a spontaneous song that's going to help us while we're doing that. Um, I'll give you like three minutes to figure it out. I want it to be country. We need country music. That's what feels right. Um, I wanted to have these lines. A new house. Hey, get your phone so you can get these. A new house. A trailer for the family. A cart full of food. And more toilet paper than I've ever seen. Oh my word. All right, got it?
new house, trailer for the family, cart full of food, more toilet paper than I've ever seen. So you, you got just a little bit, okay. like moments you have. And then I, I want to take a moment and uh, I'll show you a little behind the scenes that's been going on on the screens. Well, I, I just want to read and thank a lot of people. I want to thank hundreds of volunteers who helped to pack, sort food, bring in grocery carts. I want to thank everyone in our church family who brought shampoo and conditioner and body wash and toilet paper. I want to thank L'Oreal and Victoria Bedke who arranged it for the makeup, Robbie Beavis who brought the forklift and worked for hours driving it, and then all of those who helped with food, Lorenzo Briscoe, the Performance Food Group, Sam's, Bowerman Trucking, Thermo King, Huggin Hall, CalArc, Kroger on McCain, Convoy of Hope, Popeyes, and Lisa Academy North, and then those who helped with carts, and you can only imagine us getting carts from Sam's in North Little Rock, Kroger on McCain, Kroger on Camp Robinson, Kroger on JFK, the Walmart Neighborhood Market in Sherwood, Home Depot in North Little Rock, Lowe's in North Little Rock, the Walmart Super Center on McCain, and Academy Sports in Sherwood. So thanks to all of them. That's a lot of food. And all of us want you, our single moms, to know we love you and we stand with you. God bless you and Merry Christmas. Um, yesterday I was talking to Amy, Amanda, and Renee. And they were looking at the carts with the food. And Amy looked and said, Gatorade? She said, that's a luxury. Single moms can't afford Gatorade. She said, it's been years since there's been a Gatorade in our house. She's so excited about that. And then Renee told me, I can't say it as good as you did about Christmas Day. Now you don't have to go to the cabinet and say, I really don't feel like cooking. Let's just have sandwiches for Christmas dinner. So thank you, church family, for lovingly giving and uh, for being part of the single biggest thing we've ever done at Family Christmas and a lot of grocery carts. We're going to have a lot of fun loading them up after lunch today. It's going to be awesome. Absolutely incredible. You still can't leave. I'm looking at the aisles. You can't go. I hope you didn't write a short song, Pastor Brad. <laughs> I'll sing it twice. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, a spontaneous, first, first time ever, a spontaneous family Christmas song by Pastor Brad. And the title of it is, It Must Be Family Christmas at First NLR. All right, there you go. There's, there's the title. Wait, before you sing it, I'm just going to tell a behind the scenes thing. Obviously, we've never done this before. So we didn't know how long it'd take. The reason why Parker and I started talking and we're reading so slow is because they said, uh, you got to kill 10 minutes <laughs> and because the carts were not ready yet. So welcome to Family Christmas. All right, <laughs> Pastor Brad, it, the title again is? It Must Be Family Christmas here at First NLR. All right, uh, song styling by Pastor Brad Russell. I was finding my own business when I walked in today. Then lo and behold, they gave away a whole house and a trailer right away to top it all off there's stuff 200 shopping carts stuff plum full of food and i ain't seen so much toilet paper since i caught the swine flu <laughs> Christmas here at First in LR. Cause I Christmas here 
Is, uh, is Joseph in here? He is, yes. Joseph, come here. Come on, Joseph. Real fast. We are, we are in creative mode because we just don't have the carts. All right. Joseph is going to do a spontaneous Christmas piano medley. Uh, we're going to pick. You're going to pick three songs. And we're going to give Joseph 30 seconds, and he's going to turn them into a medley. Can you do it? Well, you're a good try. All right. They... They don't have to be Christmas songs, but at least one of them does. All right? So give me a song. Jingle Bells. Do you know Jingle Bells? Do they do that in Vietnam? Okay. Um, Feliz Navidad. Jingle Bells. Feliz Navidad. And Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. All right? Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Feliz Navidad. Jingle Bells. That's pretty awesome, Joseph. God bless you and have a merry, merry Christmas. Woo!